From the last video, you should have a clear idea of what your dosha hair type is. If you don't, click the first link in the description section below. Just in case you're curious, my hair type is a combination of kapha and vata, which makes some sense because my hair is naturally lower in porosity. Even when I was relaxed, my hair has always been both thick and dense for relaxed hair. But in the winter, I become deficient in vitamin D and iron and my hair and skin can get super dry and brittle easily. Before you run out and buy all sorts of Ayurvedic ingredients and products with the word Ayurveda on its label, remember that there's no such thing as a fix-all product and there are all sorts of natural ingredients all around you. Knowing Ayurvedic principles and your Ayurvedic hair type does not mean you have to use only Ayurvedic hair products. Limiting yourself like that will stop you from exploring other organic ingredients that may actually work better for you. So keep your mind open and explore. Kapha hair types are naturally really healthy and full. But being that everyone has all three doshas in them, neglect and unhealthy practices can turn thick kapha hair into dry vata hair or inflamed and oily pita scalp. So simplicity and balance are really important for this hair type. Keep minerals and micronutrient levels high in your body by eating clean. Keep blood circulating by staying active and keep your bodily systems in check by reducing stress. Pay attention to your hair and scalp and create a regimen that's simple and covers the basics in healthy hair that you can stick with and you should be fine. Pita hair types tend to be susceptible to overproduction of sebum and scalp inflammation due to a fiery and easily energized spirit. If you think you may be experiencing a pita imbalance, before anything, prioritize in finding your calm, where you kinda check out a little bit every day. For some people, running works, or yoga, or reading a book, or talking to a friend with positive energy, or taking naps. If you're looking for a good New Year's resolution, finding your calm should be it. It will change you physically and will change your whole reality for the better. For naturally kinky hair, especially if it's dense, sebum is a great thing. The problem is when it collects and sits on your scalp for too long. So, apart from a consistent and balanced regimen, pita hair type should be extra diligent to do things that help spread collected sebum down the length of each hair strand. Like using the bed of your nails to manually scoop up collected sebum from your scalp and spreading that sebum evenly down the length of your hair. Using a spritz with an acetic pH will help loosen up the sebum and using an organic oil will help the sebum spread better. Over time, as the sebum builds up, it keeps your hair strands stretched, super moisturized, smooth, and shiny. It's a good practice to pick up for all natural hair types, not just pita hair types. I personally do this once or twice a week. Also, pay a lot of attention to your scalp by doing quick 30-second scalp massages every time you interact with your hair, especially for pita hair types. Mixing a cooling essential oil like tea tree, peppermint, or eucalyptus in your shampoo will, in a way, put out the fire and keep the bacteria at bay. Methods worth trying for pitas are the water-only method, onion juice recipe, and ACV rinse. Not all, but many Vuatas tend to have nutrition deficiencies, 
especially iron. So if you haven't done so already, get your hemoglobin checked from a doctor. Addressing internal nutrition deficiencies will help this hair type a lot. Also, juicing green leafy vegetables consistently will help load you up with tons of nutrients that will help feed your naturally weak hair follicles. As far as hair regimen, Vuatas naturally do not produce a high amount of quality sebum, which has some specific consequences if it's not addressed. Dry hair equals breaking hair, so it's important to stay on top of it. But it's not difficult, it's more about consistency. A good start to get to know your hair is after a wash day or a re-moisturize and re-lubricate day, watch to see how many days it takes your ends to get dry. Then subtract a day. That's how often you should be moisturizing and lubricating your hair. For my hair type, it takes five days for my ends to start feeling dry. So I re-moisturize and lubricate every four days. There are multiple ways to moisturize and lubricate your hair. But for fine Vuata hair types, here's what I suggest. Start with massaging your scalp while your head is slightly inverted for about 30 seconds to a minute. This will help melt built up sebum and stimulate more sebum production. If your scalp is super dry, use a small amount of organic oil, preferably one that's infused with live herbs, because the herbs will nourish and help strengthen your follicles on a deeper level. Fight the temptation to use a whole bunch of oil at once, because it's best to build it up over time. Then moisturize and lubricate your hair strands with either the LCO, LOC, LO, or LC methods. Below are links to three videos on everything you need to know about these methods. So to avoid disturbing and manipulating your already naturally fine and fragile hair strands, you can just lightly spritz your hair, give it some time to absorb, then rather than raking it in, just squeeze in the cream and or oil. Again, try not to use too much product at once. This simple thing you just did stopped a whole bunch of breakage from happening. Vuatas also tend to have fragile hair strands, so it's important to master the art of being gentle every time you touch your hair. Also, protein is your best friend. The real protein treatment has really small molecules, so it's able to penetrate your hair strands and not just coat the outside. So it will reinforce and strengthen them from within and keep them lubricated. It's also safe to do on every wash day. This way your hair is always able to hold on to moisture for longer periods of time. Apart from reducing surface friction by keeping your hair moisturized, lubricated, and strong, keeping it stretched and protected is a great way to keep tangles, splits, and knots at bay. In fact, it's especially hard for Vuata hair types to retain length without keeping it stretched. Vuata hair types do not need heat to properly stretch their hair. So twists, braids, banding, or bantu knots will do. If you want to use heat, that's perfectly okay. Medium to low heat will be more than enough to safely stretch this hair type. Methods worth trying are the inversion method, LOC, LCO, LC, or LO, rice water rinse, ACV rinse, and the onion juice recipe. If you compare textured natural hair to other hair types, it's easy to assume that all naturals have kapha hair. It's not until you look just at the natural community that it's easier to see the differences. You may not be able to go from vuata to kapha hair, but as long as you know your hair and are consistent in how you care for it, you can achieve both length and health as a kapha or a vuata. The most valuable takeaway to me is that all three doshas need a balanced hair and scalp regimen. Pitas need to pay a little bit more attention to their scalp and vuatas need extra moisture and lubrication attention. In reality, all these hair needs and regimens overlap because they're all healthy and good things to do overall for every natural hair type. 
Like with me, according to Ayurveda, I'm a Kapha Vata combination. But because I'm natural, I still pay extra attention to my scalp like a pita. The DNA of Africans and African descents are unbelievably diverse. That's why I'm not really a huge fan of categorizing people into boxes. So use categorical systems like Ayurveda and the Andre Walker hair typing system to observe and study yourself as a unique, one-of-a-kind individual. With an open mind, patience, and trial and error, build a hair regimen that's customized and balanced for you. With a consistent low manipulation hair regimen, you can give your scalp and hair what it needs from all sorts of organic ingredients and products, some of which you can find in your own kitchen. I'm not saying not to try Ayurvedic ingredients, just try not to be exclusive. Keep your mind open and explore, because healthy hair is more about regimen than products. Since it's a fresh and new topic that many of you are interested in, in the next video, I'll go over the chemical properties of Amla, Shikakai, and Brahmi. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.